Hello everyone and welcome to Strategy Gaming Dojo where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Now today we're going to continue with our basic tutorial for Gary Grigsby's War in the East. This is episode number seven and in this episode we are going to go into the Air War. And I say that as a generalization, the Air War, because there are about three different systems in this game that let you handle how aircraft can help your ground units, uh, whether that be by transporting them, defending them, or bombing enemy units to soften them up. And so there are different systems, but well, I think most people look at the air war as confusing in this game. It's probably second only to support units for what confuses people. But I think after uh, this episode, you'll have a really good grasp on how air units are handled in the game, how you can use them, uh, how you can move them around and get them where you want them to be uh, for whatever your objectives are. And so we are going to jump into that. And the first thing we're going to do is talk about the air units themselves. So let's click on this infinity symbol down here and we are going to right click it. Now we will be looking at the uh, 15th LW Air Base here in a moment. But first of all, let's right click and go and look at what it has as a attached units okay these attached units when you click on them are the actual independent air units okay think of them now luckily for us the way the structure works in the air war is almost identical to how the structure works on the ground side all right the two command structures are completely separate until you get to the top of uh, we'll go through how that hierarchy works, but they work exactly the same, even though they're separate, they, they have the same hierarchy up to the top. And what is that hierarchy? Well, at the bottom, you have something called uh, air units, all right? And what are these air units? Well, from an American perspective, you would think of these as like squadrons, uh, these, these independent air units or uh, individual air units, you would think of them like squadrons. Now in the German nomenclature, they have uh, th three different words for what these are. The smallest unit, up to four planes, is called a swarm. All right, so up to four planes is a swarm. Uh, up to 12 planes is a stoffel. And up to 40 planes is a grupa. All right, and those are the three kind of size levels. But irregardless of what the size of this unit is, it's considered one air unit, all right? And these air units are attached to air bases, which are the next level up. And you can think of these air bases as being analogous to the division when it comes to ground units, okay? And so we've attached these just like we attach support units to divisions. These are air units that we attach to air bases. And again, these air bases, very analogous to the division on the ground side, all right? Now these air bases, I think, cause the most confusion or at least are the hardest thing for people to get their uh, arms around. And the reason is, is because we normally think of planes taking off and landing at a fixed location, uh, whether that be an airfield or an airport, you don't really think of that as ever moving, right? That's not true in this game. This airbase truly is an airbase and you can move it. And so it moves just like every other unit counter in the game. It has movement points and you can move it around the map and that's where your planes will take off from and come back and land too, okay? And so again, just get your arms around the fact that this thing, even though it's an air base, it can move. It can move all over the map. Um, and we'll get more into that in a second. But first of all, I want to go down into the air unit level, all right? And so we're going to go into this swarm. 
Now this swarm is made up of four uh, JU-87Bs. Uh, these are dive bombers, all right? We're going to go look at that. Now every air unit like this will be made up of exactly all the same kind of planes. So you would never have a mix and match. You would not click on this and see, oh, well, we have some fighters and we have some bombers in this air unit. That's not how this works. Uh, these air units all have the same type of plane, okay? And they will always have, you know, this is its swarm ID. Uh, it's like a squadron ID, obviously. Um, it's assigned to the 15th LW Air Base. Now we see that over here, the 15th LW Air Base. Uh, LW is Luftwaffe, obviously. That's what the Germans called their air force, uh, the Luftwaffe. So this is the 15th Luftwaffe Air Base, all right, that this air unit is attached to. It is a group type swarm. Uh, Nation Germany, it will tell you how many aircraft kills this group has, or this unit has, how many ground kills. They have their own individual experience and morale. And this, of course, will be heading towards the kind of uh, baseline morale. It's always trying to sort of get to that number. But uh, things can happen in the game that boost the morale or lessen the morale. Um, but overall, they're always trying to get to this kind of general morale. Then it has a fatigue number. Now that fatigue number is based on 1 to 100. I can tell you as a general rule, around 20 is when you need to start thinking about giving these uh, units a rest. Now we will be going into this in this episode, but you could move these to something called the National Reserve and they will recover fatigue faster. They will also get plane, damage planes fixed or they will get upgrades uh, at a priority. But we'll go into the National Reserve uh, eventually here. Uh, this tells you how many ready aircraft there are, four. And this tells you the max in a unit, which is four. Uh, that's because this is a swarm. It has a max number of four planes in it. Uh, ready um, and damaged. Uh, okay, so it's got four. It's got two that are damaged, uh, four that are ready, and zero in reserve. The reserve aircraft can be pulled. So if you flew out these four planes, they one or two of them got shot down you could then pull off of this reserve that is directly uh, part of the swarm, okay? Uh, this does not happen to have any in there. Group range, now you can set this based, you can click on this, and based on the number of hexes that you would want this to move, um, or that it could fly missions out to, you could lessen it. Let's say you're getting low on fuel and you don't want your air units to go as far uh, as their range would suggest that they can, uh, you can set here the number of hexes you want them to go out. If you have not set that and it's just going out to their natural range, there will be an asterisk here. Night missions. Um, early in the war, as the Luftwaffe, you have a big advantage over the Soviet Air Force. Uh, the Soviet Air Force, a big part of that is destroyed on day one. And so you do have air superiority. You will probably not be flying many night missions. As the war moves on, Soviet production ramps up, Lend-Lease kicks in, the Allies start giving the Soviets more and more planes. Uh, you may be forced to fly night missions. Uh, with certain aircraft, and that's what this is for. You can pick, you know, yes. Oh, well, I clicked this over, uh, and so now we can't click it back. Doesn't matter for our purposes here. So be careful with night missions. Uh, if you select yes, uh, at least until next turn, uh, we cannot go back. Um, this over here will tell you the type of aircraft, the JU-87B. Um, and then it says dive bomber, all right? So it's always going to tell you down here on this level, what do these planes do? And you've really only got, uh, you know, six or so kinds of planes that you have to remember. Uh, you've got fighters, fighter bombers, level bombers, dive bombers, and recon aircraft. I mean, just generally, and transport, okay? So that would make six. Just generally, those are the six kinds of aircraft that you have to remember. 
I think if you're playing this game, you kind of already have a pretty good idea of what they do. Uh, fighters run escort missions. Now, they can strafe the ground, of course, uh, but they will predominantly be protecting your other planes, and the planes that they'll be protect protecting, for the most part, will be either dive bombers or regular level bombers uh, as they go on missions to try to uh, destroy enemy units, to try to hit enemy installations, um, to blow things up. All right, so fighters protect. Now you do have fighter bombers, all right? And those fighter bombers can either run missions as fighters or bombers, but you will have to select that down here. If we have a swarm or a stoffel or a grupa that is fighter bombers, we would pick down here whether we want them to operate as a fighter or as a bomber, at least for that turn. Okay, now usually those fighter bombers, when they're operating as fighters, are not as good as normal fighters, and when they're operating as bombers, aren't quite as good as normal bombers. That's a generalization, uh, but they are more flexible. Obviously, you can use them in both roles, which is very nice, depending on what you have going on. Uh, when you do see those fighter bombers, you'll also see what they were trained as. Generally, you're going to want them to operate as what they were trained. So if they were trained as fighters, you would, for the most part, again, a generalization, want to operate them as fighters because they're going to be better in that role, of course. Okay? Uh, for the So it tells you, it's always going to tell you exactly what they do. Maximum speed, cruise speed, climb rate, max altitude, max load. Now these can carry things. Uh, now, they're not as efficient as your transport planes, but they can, you know, carry stuff. Uh, the range in miles uh, and also in hexes, that would be kind of the normal range, all right? Uh, their armor durability, maneuverability, again, these are all the things that go into the witch's brew that makes up a combat when the game resolves combat between planes. Uh, so, you know, look through these, see what your planes can do reliability all right uh, this kind of goes to how often they're damaged or how long it takes to repair them if they are now you it, this game will get all the way down to the individual element level you see what they carry which way it faces so forward facing it's going to have the 7.92 mill, millimeter gun uh, it's also got one in the tail uh, then you have the bombs all right Germans generally going to carry 1,000 kilogram bombs, 500 kilogram bombs, 250 kilograms, and the 50 kilogram bombs. Of course, the bigger, generally speaking, the better. You could disband this unit if you wanted to. Uh, I don't know necessarily why you would want to, but you could. Uh, you, the planes would go back to the reserve, generally speaking. You should get a pop-up for that. Um, I will say that every once in a while up here, you'll see that one of these uh, units is going to be withdrawn on a certain date. Now that, if you've been watching War in the Pacific, we've been talking about that. All that is, is this is a very sophisticated board game. And in board games, oftentimes in war board games, units are withdrawn from the map on a certain turn. That is because that's what happened historically or it's for balance of play reasons. Uh, they take certain uh, counters off the board. That's all this is. Now, this is not a counter. You won't see it removed from the board. It is in the container called the 15th LW Air Base, okay? So those are, you know, that's a good covering of the air units. Let's go find a different base and see. Those were all dive bombers, okay? Uh, that is not an ideal setup, really, at least for me. That's my opinion, is I like to have a, a little bit of a mix between fighters and bombers at specific air bases. Now, it all depends on how you're going to have your uh, air base set up across the map, uh, but we'll get into that. Let's right-click on this one. Let's see what we have down here. Um, we have uh, the JU-88D1. Generally, these operate as strategic recon. Okay, so it's a recon plane. Again, it goes into all these same uh, stats and whatnot. Uh, I should have mentioned that here, 
you can put these planes in the National Reserve if that's what you want to do. So they can go back to that National Reserve, then they can come back out in a well, they have to sit there for, it takes a turn to get them there, a turn to get them out, uh, and you could put these then in a different uh, base if you wanted to, uh, but we'll get into that as we talk more about the hierarchy here. Again, you could disband. Now, this is something we didn't talk about, replacements allowed and aircraft changes. This uh, allows you to prioritize certain air units for getting replacement aircraft, Okay, so if this is a very important group to you, you want to be able to run the strategic recon, it's your most important strategic uh, recon unit, you may say, okay, we definitely want replacements here, and every other strategic recon unit say, not allowed. Okay, so it's allowed or not allowed, all this does is allow you to prioritize if you want to. If you don't want to and you leave them all too allowed, the AI is going to pick where the replacements go. And that could be inefficient because you may be replacing in units that are not that important to you. They may be way behind the lines. You aren't using them as much. Uh, so again, this allows you to give a priority to your replacements. Aircraft change, this is upgrades. And so generally every aircraft type has an upgrade path. Uh, and as soon as there are enough of those planes in the pool, it will um, change out this unit for you. You can say auto if that's uh, if you just want the AI to handle that. Or you can click on this and you can say uh, only upgrade it. Uh, the reason it says this is because if you have it on auto, depending on what planes are in the, in the pool, uh, the game may actually uh, not upgrade. They may de-upgrade your plane. So it may it may go down a level because the game decides that you have so many of this plane that's not quite as good as the one you're flying and you need this plane somewhere else uh, in another unit that it may actually back you up. Uh, this allows you to say, I only want this unit upgraded. I never want it to go backwards on the chain. Now, if it did go backwards, eventually, you know, it would catch up and upgrade again. Uh, but, you know, if you want to specify that it can, the AI can only upgrade this unit, you can pick that, or you can manually do it. And here you will see the upgrades that you could potentially pick. Now you can't do it here because there are none available. You see the type of plane that is already being flown, and then you see three others uh, that you could potentially pick to go into this unit. Uh, I never really do that. I, uh, you know, you could pick here. It tells you how many are in air groups, how many factories are making that certain kind of plane. Uh, you could also look up at the production tabs to look for that. Um, but essentially, I always have these on auto. I know some people would disagree with that. Some people like to micromanage exactly what their upgrades are and know which units have the, you know, the shiniest new plane. Now you could know that, but they want to have control over where those are going. I do understand that. That's just not how I play the game. It's not where I decide to spend my energy micromanaging. I would rather do that on the uh, ground units, personally. That's just me. Uh, but you can pick however you want to play the game right there. All right. Uh, we also have some DO-17Zs here. Oh, let's go back. There we go. We have 18 of these. It is called a Grupa, so you could have up to 40. Uh, you see we have 26 damage now, so uh, as these get repaired, we'll get closer up to that 40 level. Um, it is part of the 14th LW. It Oh, here's one. So it withdraws on turn 157 in 1944. All right. Not something we really need to worry about right now. Um, Again, it's got all the stats here. You can look at that. This is a level bomber, all right? And uh, it's got, you know, pretty good range, 800 miles. And again, you could put it in the reserve if you want to, but we're going to get into that as we move along here. So again, you've got air units on the bottom, and I might as well use this excuse to draw. 
very quickly. At the bottom, you've got these attached air units. So we have air units at the very bottom of the chain. Those are made up of individual planes, uh, but we're you know, just going to look at, at the air unit as being the bottom here. Those are attached to air bases. And again, air bases are essentially moving airfields that can move on the map. So let's go look at these air bases for a minute, okay? Uh, I will turn on Shift Z so we can see the, the relationships here of who controls what. All right, uh, let's go down to this group. Okay, perfect. Um, its direct headquarters is up here, all right? But clicking on this, it's just like moving a division. You, you start to see, see the movement points here. Um, it can move, it can move by ground or it can move by rail. So if you have one on rail, let's just go click on this. We'll go to the rail movement, come back down here. You can move this by rail. And it, again, is a moving airfield. Uh, but it also has other parts. So let's go look at it. Uh, we've already talked about the attached units here. All right. And there is really not a limit per se in, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's not true. You can have up to nine air units attached to an air base, okay, regardless of size. So if these were all 40, that would be fine. You can have up to nine attached to an air base. The problem will come as we get into its actual ground elements. So the ground elements for an air base are always, an air base is always going to have anti-aircraft, okay? That's just natural. It's an element of this air base. It's not like it's an attached, anything attached down here. Um, as you can see, you know, there, there's just, there's nothing else we could attach as far as like anti-aircraft or whatnot. What you attach to air bases is always air units, all right? But it does have this air support and support. And why is this important? Well, you essentially need one point of air support uh, for every bit of aviation support that you need for the aircraft that you're flying out of this base. All right, let's back up there for a second. Air support. If we go down here, support and need, you see the total amount of support that is at this air base, 250. Okay, where does it get that number? 220 is called air support, 30 is called support. What is this? These are the guys that sit in the office and make sure everybody has uh, food to eat, that they, the planes have bullets, uh, that they have bombs, that you have the right flight suit, that it's all of those logistical things that make up a unit. In this game is abstracted to something called support. Now support is general support, air support, uh, would, you know, if we're talking about the abstraction, would include the guys that fill up the planes with fuel, okay? The guys that have a mallet out there knocking a, a dent out of the wing, uh, the guys that maintain the airfield, okay? It's all of those things is air support, all right? Well, depending on the number of planes that you have at a base, you need a certain amount of air support. In this case, we see the total number. Now, you you know, it may be helpful if they would have in parens put what the air support is, but you can very easily see it up here. It's 220 out of the 250 is air support. All right. 161 is the total amount of support it needs, or this, when I say it, the air base needs. Okay. Uh, and that uh, is made up of 143 that it needs for air support. All right, so this AV number needs to be less than this air support number for this airbase to be operating at peak efficiency for getting aircraft on the ground, getting them back up, 
uh, again with the the bombs the bullets the flight suits the helmets the everything that they need they need to have air support that is greater than this AV number and in general they need to have some total support uh, bigger than this need number all right so it tells you support and then need this is air need or air support need all right um, and so you know this this air base has units that are just units of the base itself and then you can attach these air units to it uh, you're limited to nine or well you're not limited you can go over the air support need but then your units are not going to operate nearly as well all right um, and so these are very analogous to divisions when we think of ground units all right they move they have headquarters they have attached units to them and you know they could move all over the map these are what you will be have you will have behind your front lines that uh, will be supporting your ground units so in, you know it will become a question how close do you want to have this to the front lines well if it's very close they can run more missions to support your ground units whatever those missions may be but they also run the risk of getting attacked by the soviet air force if they're closer if they're further back they can run fewer missions uh, but maybe it's a little safer back there okay um and so that is the air base all right air bases as i said are very much like divisions and as that it, as is the case then they have got a core headquarters now these are called Flieger Corps uh, flying Corps headquarters in this case it's the eighth Flieger Corps and this air base to get maximum support from the Flieger Corps needs to be within five hexes just like when we talk about the divisions here let me get off that movement just like when we talk about the divisions needing to be within five of its core headquarters the air bases need to be within five of their Flieger Corps okay um, and that's to get support from that Flieger Corps so let's go look at a Flieger Corps and a Flieger Corps you see the three X's it is very similar to a core headquarters it kind of operates in the same function it gives support to the units underneath it in this case those units can either be air bases all right or um, they can also attach support units so let's just pull a support unit uh, so again you see this assign button that popped up during ground units the only thing you can attach to air units or ed air headquarters i should say are flak anti-aircraft so let's attach one of those um uh, let's attach one of those right why is it not here oh sorry <laughs> i was like ah, what attach support so just like with the ground units you can flip back and forth and see these this is the attached support so air headquarters on the Flieger corp core level can come and attach support but only anti-aircraft okay and why would you want that to be well it's just like every other headquarters unit in the game you may want to protect it from soviet air attack so they give you the option but the important thing here uh, for the air war is attached units now a flieger corps can attach air so the flieger corps can attach individual air bases all right and it, it just acts as a core headquarters for these air bases it provides support and then maybe most importantly it has what is called a supply dump and a fuel dump and if we click on these all this does is it's uh, essentially stockpiling fuel and stockpiling supply that it could then assuming they're within command range give to the air bases to help with their fuel 
and supply needs, okay? And so this is really just like a core headquarters. It's got its own TOE uh, based on these items. Uh, it's got its own morale. It's motorized, so on and so forth. Uh, very much like a core headquarters. In this case, it's just a headquarters over air bases as opposed to divisions, all right? The next level up is what is called a Luflot. And a Luflot is like an army headquarters, all right? So in on the ground side, you think of army headquarters. They command core headquarters generally, although they can command individual units as well. And in this case, uh, you see that this Luflot First of all, let's go to a sign. It could also pull anti-aircraft. If you want to protect this headquarters more, it could have some anti-aircraft attached to it. And then you see it's attached units. So it right now has no attached support. Attached units, you see the two Flieger Corps, the eighth Flieger Corps, all right? But then it also has an individual airbase unit attached to it. So just like the Army headquarters on the ground side, it can uh, command core headquarters or what is the equivalent of an individual division. Now generally I like to get these air bases directly underneath a Flieger Corps. Uh, so we could go to this, we could click on headquarters and as you can see we could push this down just like the push and pull method for support units and we could assign it to the two Flieger Corps for no admin costs. Now it's down there all right, and if we, uh, oh, this is the airbase. It's showing us the airbase that we just uh, changed. It's a two Flieger Corps, all right, and its bigger headquarters is Luflot 2. And again, these are like core headquarters. These are like army headquarters. Uh, and if we go look at the Luflot, it very much like the Flieger Corps has support that it can lend out uh, based on the needs of the headquarters underneath it. It has a supply dump and it has a fuel dump. Uh, you will also know, notice, uh, no, I guess you wouldn't know it if you're listening to this, uh, you will also notice that it has this support level idea. Uh, this is a, has, has to do with attached support I would never do it this way. We would always want this to be at zero. If you want to uh, get some anti-aircraft here, I would always you know, attach that directly. Uh, you don't want the game shuttling things in and out or anti-aircraft in and out of these Luflots. Uh, and so these Luflots then, every single one of them is attached to an army group and that's as high as it goes. And this is when the chain of commands meet up at the top, right? So on the army, on the ground side, I should say, over here on the ground, you know, you have support units, you then have uh, divisions, then you have core headquarters, you know, core HQ, you then have armies, army headquarters and then in the middle I'll put here army group headquarters AG AGHQ wow this is the best I've ever drawn with a mouse on the air side you have air units which are those swarms stoffels and groupas you have air units up to air bases there we go. Air bases onto Flieger Corps, Flieger HQ. All right. Flieger Corps up to Luflot HQ. And then those Luflots, that's where the chain ends for air units. They always go to army groups. All right. And those are the two different chains of command. Um, these air units that are part of the air bases, they can be moved around and they could be moved to different air bases. They could be moved, uh, as we've seen, 
up to the Luflot level if we wanted to. Uh, we could attach them, um, you know, directly to uh, a Flieger core if we wanted to, uh, but they are very much like support units. They can kind of move around. And next, I'll show you how we move those. Um, And with that, I think I'm actually going to call this episode to a halt and do this as two episodes. I don't want it to get too long. I can already see that this is going to end up being about an hour and a half. So I'm going to try to split these into two. I think this is a good uh, spot to stop. When we come back next time, we'll talk about all of the other concepts that we need to cover. Uh, so... Thank you very much for joining me. This has been episode number seven. It's the first part of the air war. When we come back next time in episode eight, it will be the second part of the airport, air, airport, air war. So as always, Strategy Gaming Dojo, thank you so much. I'll talk to you next time.